Hello everybody and welcome back to PGR Brusda. Today what we're going to be doing is the mass silage harvest which I said we were going to be doing. I call it a mass silage harvest but I don't know if it's going to be that big. Uh, it may just be one field but still we're going to do one. And uh, yeah it won't be the last one in this series. So one thing which I wanted to show you first of all is something which I discovered which is a little bit fishy. Um, and I'm not talking about the fish farm. Whoa, just uh, spiked myself there. We have in here one beehive as you can see. And in here, we have three beehives, and we have 375 litres of honey. And here we have 375 litres of honey. So, um, <laughs> does it make a difference? Does the number of beehives actually affect the speed of production? It doesn't look like it. So maybe there isn't any point in filling these up with beehives, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, just an observation which I made, quite interesting, never noticed it before. But yeah, there we go, the first thing that I wanted to show you. Now the next thing is actually over in the fish yard over there. Probably just part this up. Because uh, what we need to have is the forklift and actually the, possibly the tractor as well. Uh, actually no, before we do the forklift, let me just go into the tractor. We need to sell this stuff. Uh, we need to make sure we've got enough money for this silage harvest of course so yeah the more we can get the better and we do have several pallets of honey on here it's not going to be worth a fortune but it should still be fairly decent nothing like the caviar though wow the caviar is impressive oh look I still haven't put the track in I'm supposed to be doing that but I haven't actually got around to it so let me just reverse this in and get them sold you need to be really close. There we go. Anything else telling? Come on, sell, sell. I can't get the tractor underneath there. It's too low. There goes that one, and finally one more crate. It's quite tricky. Okay, it's not gonna fit. I mustn't keep ramming. This is one stubborn pallet. I had to get into this position just to get it to sell. Anyway, not to worry, it is now done. And we have managed to increase the amount of money in our bank account. Quite a decent amount actually, it's not too bad. So I'm quite happy with that. What we're going to do is put the tractor over here. And I think we'll just leave it here since there is nothing else to do with it. I suppose what we could do is get any beehives if we're still going to do that and put them onto there. Then bring them over. And then next time these are full, we could then load up the trailer once again. But that won't be today, far from it in fact. But what will be today is the caviar, the fish and the frozen fish, and hopefully maybe a bit of smoked fish as well. Although actually you know, maybe the smoked fish may take some time since we didn't really have too much frozen fish to be going with, so yeah, you need to have quite a bit for it to be productive. Still, first things first, caviar. These fish are alive. Oh yeah, and last week somebody said when I went into this mode here, that black box that appears, somebody thought I was actually trying to cover up the pallet for some reason. It's actually a glitch or something with the forklift. Uh, so just to clarify, there you go. Lift it up. Put it over here. I know we've done all this before, but these jobs must be done before we can properly start today's episode. So that's that one done. Perfect. Uh, what I'm going to do is just try and squeeze through here. Saves turning round, and I need to go to this pallet over here, which is the frozen fish. And this needs to go to the smokehouse, which is just behind us. And I probably should have squared up a bit better. Should stay on there. A bit of luck. And if the caviar or the smoked fish is ready to sell, we'll do that now. But I wouldn't have thought either of them would be. There we go, so that's good. Oh, actually, that crate is looking fairly full. Sometimes it does just show it as full, though, even if it's only, for example, 70% full. Auto save. Okay, if you get close enough, sometimes it does tell you. 
100%, wow. So we do have a full pallet of smoked fish. Let's see what it's worth. I would have thought it would be worth quite a bit. Um, and also, actually I'm not too sure where you sell it, but I would have thought it would be over at the usual sell point. So we'll take it over there and hope for the best. Which makes me think caviar. I oh, know the caviar is not ready. You can tell. But a few requests to use the Val Met again. Just finding the right job for it, really. But hopefully, I'll be able to use it very soon. And let's see if this sells. It is. Right, watch the money. It's not super impressive, but it's better than just fish on its own. £8,385. I'm happy with that. So, that is everything done here in our industrial estate. All we need to do now is go and I think you'll be leasing the uh, forage harvester. We'll take it down to fill number 24. And we'll part this just here. Now, what tractor shall we use with the trailer? Uh, probably the Massey Ferguson, I would have thought. <laughs> Some of you may be shouting, the Valmet, but no, it's just not big enough. It doesn't have enough power. We'd have to have a very small trailer. Right, well, here we are at the store. And what we should be able to do now is buy or lease the trailer. I'm not really too sure what we should do with the trailer. We may even have a good one already. Um, in fact, thinking about it, I think maybe the lorry might be more suitable. Um, yeah, shame you can't categorise things in the garage. It would have been much easier to do it that way. But not to worry. Uh, just having a quick flick through what we've got. We do indeed have that trailer. It's not really suitable for silage because it doesn't have the sides on it. Neither is the Joskin, although the Joskin is probably better than the Articulator trailer. So no, I think what we'll do, despite having some trailers already, we're going to actually go and lease one. So if I go on to trailers, which shouldn't be too hard to find, there we go. Then we will choose something a bit more suitable. Probably this one here. It just looks more the part. I think it's probably set up um, specifically for grass and silage and that kind of thing. So, yeah. It's not too expensive either, if we're just leasing it. Next, forage harvesters. Now this is the tricky thing. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? We could use the Jaguar. Um, although, of course, we have got this, but I think it only cuts grass. Yes, it does. So I'll use that in another series sometime, but it will be very nice to use. So this one here. We'll go with the biggest engine and standard wheels. That should be fine. And finishing off, we need to have the harvester header, which is the Orbis. So we'll get that leased as well. And there we go. Oh, it's created some lag. I'd better just save it in case it's going to crash. It has actually crashed at the store before, uh, which was very strange because it was actually the forklift which crashed it, but it hasn't crashed again. So I really don't know if it was the map or the forklift. Very hard to say. We don't have manual attach. So that's the tractor sorted. Jump out of here and we'll do the forage harvester as well. It's a bit tight, but hopefully we can get in there. Ah, there's a collision sticking out which you can't see. In that case, we'll spin around and pick it up this way. Okay, off we go. The tractor can follow us. And, yeah, to be honest, even though we've been to this field, I can't really remember the scale of it. I don't think it was huge, but I wouldn't exactly call it small. Right, off we go. Make sure the tractor is still following is okay. Yep, good. Here is the biogas plant, so we know exactly where to take it to. Hopefully there are some pits. Yep, loads of them back there. And I've never actually found the correct way to get to this field before. Um, which is very strange. I can only assume you actually have to go through here to get to it. And if you do, it's actually a very good thing. 
and it also means this is going to be the perfect field to work on. It is. This is the actual way. Wow. Surprising. But nice. First of all, we have got, I think it's a wheat or a barley field. It backs onto it. I think it's barley. And then, yeah, beyond there, pretty much connected. There is about a metre strip of grass between the two fields. We have got our maize field or corn field. Just depends what you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be hopefully a good harvest this. We're going to stick with the follow me. I think it works quite well. Plenty of wind turbines about. And yeah, we can just get cracking straight away. We just need to find the entrance to the field. Here we go. This will do nicely. So yeah, we'll put the pipe up. Unfold it all. And really, that wants to be tucked up as close as possible to the back of the machine. Uh, but sometimes if you do this, it can actually start to push you. So, is 5 good enough? It might be. I would have thought it would be. Oh no, it's actually trying to push. Wow, that is surprising. Uh, well, let's open this up. Stop pushing. And hopefully, if I now start, it's going to work out okay. Let it warm up a bit. That's not working. That is not working. How weird. What I've done this time is attach the trailer to the harvester. I'll have to tow it around with us. Which I don't usually like to do, but for the headland it's fine. The thing which is most concerning is the fact that it wasn't actually filling it when the tractor was towing it, which is very strange. I'm not too sure why it wouldn't work that way. We'll try it again later. But yeah, looking at the fill rate, it's going to take some time to actually fill this. Thankfully, the tipping point is extremely close. But look at that, that is actually quite a big field. Perfect for today's episode. Now tomorrow, we're not going to be doing any silage harvesting, we might be moving a few pallets about, but mainly I'm looking to expand the business once again. Somebody pointed out to me there was a noodle production mod. Yep, noodles. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and give it a go. It sounds very intriguing. After all, this is the map of diversity. We need to do as many different things as possible. And if a mod such as making noodles appears, we can't really go and miss it, can we? So yeah, I'm going to try and do that. It should be very interesting. But, yeah, look at this, we're right down at this pond. Extremely close. It's a very interesting map, it really is different to the UK maps. And that's a good thing, because I know that some people do get bored of the UK maps, as good as they are. Um, some people prefer to see a variety, and I do as well. I do prefer to uh, use other maps as well as just UK, but UK maps are always going to be my favourite, I think. Even though this one is very good. I think one thing which which somebody else actually pointed out not so long ago was the fact that um, in the UK, at least stereotypically, the fields are close together, even though in counties such as Lincolnshire, Cambridgeshire, that sort of area, they're huge. In fact, the fens, it's like the UK's equivalent to America or Australia. Um, but yeah, stereotypically, and in a lot of counties actually, the fields are small, the roads are tight, and yeah, I mean, it, it can feel claustrophobic to somebody who is used to the bigger fields, which is fair enough. So having the bigger fields is a nice change to a number of people. Anyway, headland number one almost finished, 51% full, so we should be able to go around again. Then we'll reattach to the tractor and unload. Now you can see the exact size of this field. Currently sitting at 86%. We're not quite back yet, but it should be exactly right. We should be pretty much at the starting point when we are full. Just around this corner. 90%, we have 10% remaining. There is the tractor. Can we get back to it though? We really should be able to. missing a bit there. 5%, it's not looking too likely actually. 
It's going to be close, but not close enough. Right, finishing off. Can we get this piece done? Oh yes, look at that, perfect. Grab a piece and it will fill it. There we go. So what we need to do is drop off there. Wow, that was <laughs> seriously heavy. We'll leave the harvester there, reattach. And we should get quite a few loads out of this, maybe three or four. Yep, that's pretty heavy. We can close it up again. Should stop it from blowing out. And then just up the road to the tipping point, and also the cell point actually, but it needs to ferment first. So that's another job, it will need to be compacted as well, but I think that will be a job for another day since there's going to be more loads coming in from other fields. Wind turbine ahead, mustn't crash into it. Almost looks like the UK that, over there, it really could be. Here we are. Right, choose a pit. Which pit should we go for? I think we'll keep it simple. We'll go for the first one. We might as well. And I'll try and drive as much as I can do at the same time as M2. But you can't go too fast with the realistic mod installed. Realistic fuel mod. But that's fairly even. It's good enough. Right, back to the field. And you know what I think what we're going to do, just to keep it simple, is we're going to reattach it to the harvester. It also saves any problems with uh, the tractor crashing into us due to a bad setup. <laughs> if I don't set up follow me correctly. Um, that, yeah, the engine does turn off if you go too far away, as you will likely know. And there we go, and let's resume. We should probably let it spin up first. Move on to going up and down the field now. It should make it easier, although what I do need to do is cut through a bit further down to make it easier, otherwise the turning each time can get very tight. So yeah, in fact we'll be pretty much full again in a second, filling up relatively quickly. This time we'll go up here, we'll cut up about here, and yeah, like I say, just makes it easier when turning. Instead of doing a reverse and then a turn, or having a really tight swing, we can just gradually turn and just makes life easier. Of course we get closer each time. And we're probably not going to get to the end before being full. 1% left. Oh, uh, no. Okay, well, we'll just do that. And we'll get it turned off. We'll give the trailer back to the tractor once again. And, yeah. I think probably one more load. Probably half a trailer, actually. And then we'll be done. Very heavy. I think the harvester is struggling to pull it actually. Right, back into the Matty Ferguson. We'll get it tipped.
I try and drive over where we've been. Should flatten it slightly. And we don't want to go up it at too much speed. It's very steep. Right, there we go. That will actually be compacting it slightly, maybe about 5%. But we're going to have to go over it again later anyway. There we go. Okay, final load. Let's head back. The final triangle. I have missed a few bits here and there, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to accumulate too much, it's just it does annoy a few people when they see the old bit dotted about. But uh, yeah, farming simulator makes it very obvious. In real life, you've probably driven over it or smashed it up a bit, the bits which have been left. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's so obvious where you haven't haven't been in this game. Same with mowing. It doesn't really look the same in real life, the difference between where you have cut and where you haven't. It goes incredibly thin in this game. But, yeah, I mean, it's nothing. It's just a minor technicality. So, yeah, we're just going to finish off here. I'll back up for this one. And looks like we finish off with about 21,000 litres. Just shores off. Oh, come on, I've got to get the final piece there. Too busy looking at the dial, showing how full it is. There we go. Pipe in. We don't need to cover it over this time, the trailer can stay open. So we'll just drop it off and finish off by taking the tractor back to the yard. There we go. So we're not going to get rid of the harvester because I think we're going to be using it again very soon. Most likely next weekend. We'll do a bigger silage harvest. Um, and I'm actually wondering if this is going to be a good map for multiplayer. I don't know. Obviously there'll be none of the industrial estate which we've set up. That would disappear completely. But it does seem to be pretty good multiplayer map, providing it is actually um, enabled for it. Some maps don't fully work on multiplayer. Lots of grass as well on this map, which again makes me think if it's a good map for multiplayer then it does have everything it requires. Um, maze, grass, the things which most people want to do. Basically silage. Okay, so there we go, all done. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.